Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. This is Cassie with Junkin 101 with Cassie. Anyway, today we're going to be doing some sewing. I um, posted a picture of a project I have done recently and somebody asked me for a tutorial for it. So, Lois, this tutorial is for you, but I figured everybody could get some use out of it. Today we're going to be making a fabric rope wrapped bowl. Um, I'm not sure that that's exactly what it's called, but that's what I'm going to call it. So for today's video, you're going to need your sewing machine. You're going to need a couple of these wonder clips. You're also going to need some rope. And this rope I purchased at Hobby Lobby. It's 56 cents a yard and it is one centimeter wide. Um, it's very squishy, very soft. It looks thick and it looks scary, but trust me, your sewing machine will go through it. I suggest you put a leather needle or a jeans needle in your sewing machine before you get started. I did try this with just a regular needle in my sewing machine and it had been a needle that I've used for, you know, many, many years, um, for sewing on paper and things like that. And my needle did break, so, um, anyway, yeah, I had to switch my needle out. I'm trying to back out here a little bit so you can just see what I'm working with here. So, you need your rope, and then you need some strips of fabric. And I have just gone through my fabric, and I have chose random strips. They don't have to be any particular size. I have seen people do an inch wide. I've seen people do like an inch and a quarter to like an inch and three quarters, but you just need some strips. Now I want mine to be very random looking and mismatched. I don't want it to be all matchy matchy. And this is what the first bowl that I made turned out to look like. It's very pretty. It's got the raw edges on here. This is not a completely finished look. It does have the raw edges and all the, the fluffy stuff. So, let's get into making this. I'm going to take my ball of rope here. And I don't know exactly how much you need for rope or for fabric. It all depends on what size of a ball or what size of a bowl you would like to make not a ball what size of bowl you would like to make and i do apologize for my chair it's very squeaky it's very noisy now i'm going to take my ball here of my rope and i'm just going to place that on the floor beside me okay i'm going to turn my sewing machine on and I'm going to start off with just a regular straight stitch. Now, um, we will be switching our stitch to a zigzag here in just a little bit. So I'm going to slide this back so you can watch me do this first part. So I'm going to pick a strip of fabric. It doesn't matter what kind. I have a little bowl over here to the side for all my little loose threads because you're going to have a lot of those. So. What you want to do is you want to take your end of your rope and you want to get your fabric to where you can like bend it over the end of your rope. And this is the hardest part. Getting it started is the hardest part. So you want to be able to enclose the end of your rope. So just fold it however, there's no right or wrong way to cover the end of your rope. And I, just, I struggle with this part of it. The rest of it's really super easy. There's no right or wrong way, as I was saying, to cover your rope the end of your rope. Just fold it whatever works for you. 
okay now you're going to take one of your little wonder clips and you're going to clip the end of that so that it doesn't let go and now you're just going to take and add an angle as you can see here I'm doing it at an angle let me zoom in just a little bit and you're just going to tightly wrap your fabric strip around your rope you want to make sure it stays overlapping so that your rope doesn't show through and just continue wrapping I hope everybody is well enjoying your Sunday I know it's it feels like it's a beautiful day outside I haven't been outside but it seems like it's a little overcast but it seems like it's nice out the birds are chirping if you can hear them in the background My husband is helping his parents and his brother went with him because they needed his help. So it's just myself home and my son, but he's in his room playing computer games online with his friend from school. So I figured now would be a good time to show you guys how to do this because I made my bowl yesterday and I posted pictures of it on Facebook and Lois asked me if I could do a tutorial on it so I figured why not there are many tutorials out there on how to do this but this is just how I do it okay so now I have my first strip of fabric sewn on here now you could continue going with your strip of fabric and just keep it going, but I find it easier to wrap some, sew some, wrap some, sew some. So I'm going to pull my sewing machine into frame here. And this first part is kind of hard on your sewing machine. This is where I broke my needle, so I hope I don't do that again. So you're going to take, you're going to take your end and you're just going to fold it in on itself and you're going to start making a spiral and you're just going to roll that up and you want to keep it tight. And when you get a few rounds on there, like so, then you want to lift up on your foot because it will pick it up some and put it under there and you don't want it right at the edge. You want it in a little bit, but to where it's still going to catch that first one. And you're just going to sew a straight line across it here. So I'm gonna go nice and slow because it is thick. It's going to back stitch. Oh, see? My sewing machine isn't happy. If your sewing machine does that, then you can use the crank on the side of your sewing machine to get it going. Okay. So now we're going to go forward again. 
And I'm just hand cranking mine, putting pressure on my spiral to keep it in line. And I'm gonna try to go forward with the petal again. Just go real slow with this part. One second. Sorry about that. My son decided to come out of his bedroom. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my thread there. I'm going to pick up the foot and slide this out. Now I'm going to go this direction to make an X through here. So again, we're going to put this in there. Put our foot down. I'm going to start it with the hand crank to get it going. So now that we have it started with the hand crank, I'm going to then very slowly stitch it. And it's wanting to do the back stitch. Oh, see, made it mad again. It seems to go mad on the back stitch. And I don't understand why, but that's okay. Just take your time. Listen to your machine. If it's mad, just slow down. Use your hand crank. Once you get past this and you start doing the zigzag stitch, it's much smoother and easier. Okay, I'm gonna finish this out with the hand crank because my machine is not very happy. Make sure you keep it nice and tight. Okay, so there is that, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to snip these threads off because you don't want those to get caught up in the machine or in your project. So just snip off those loose threads. Okay. I'm going to pause for a moment because I see I need to do a new bobbin. So I will redo my bobbin, rethread my machine, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have rewound my bobbin, I've rethreaded my machine, and we're ready to start now. So when doing this, you want to keep your rope on this side of your machine. And there is a very important reason on why. And I will explain here in a little bit why that's so important. So I'm going to switch my machine over to a zigzag stitch. And I'm going to change the width of my stitches. My machine goes up to 5.0, and then I'm gonna take the length up to a 3.0. Those are the settings that I had when I made my first bowl, and it seemed to work just fine for me. So again, make sure your machine's nice and slow. Lift up your foot, push your coil underneath. Line your coil up so that it's just right so that when you're doing your zigzag, it catches both coils, okay? You just kind of want to feed it into your machine and keep turning it as you're working.
Now, as you can see, I'm almost to the end of my fabric here. So this is where I'm going to choose another piece of fabric. And I'm going to add it on. So I have this nice, pretty floral piece. I'm going to undo my wonder clip and set it right there so I know where it's at. And to add a new piece, all you do is you lay it over where your last one ended and start wrapping. I find it very easy to do it this way because you have your machine holding the rest of your coil for you. And all you have to do is wrap it around and to get it tight, all you gotta do is pull a little bit and that'll tighten up that last wrap. So then you wrap it around again, give it a little pull to keep it nice and snug and just keep wrapping. Again, remember to wrap your fabric at an angle, that way it continues to come towards you on the rope. If you don't wrap it at an angle, all you're going to do is wrap it in the same place over and over and over, and then it will get too thick, and then you won't be able to sew through it. So I'm going to wrap this fabric on here, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have wrapped that piece of fabric around my rope and I have clipped it at the end with my little wonder clip. And now we're going to continue with our zigzag stitch. Again, remember to respect your machine. Go nice and slow because this is thick. And remember, if you need to, switch out your universal needle for um, a fabric or for a jeans or leather needle. And somehow my thread on top got messed up. It wants me to check and re-thread the machine. So we'll do that. Let's see if I can get this through on the first try. Okay. Again, remember to lift your foot. That way you can get a little extra room. I have a mark on my presser foot that I know if I keep that lined up with the line in between my two coils, I know I'll be okay. It'll catch both sides. Now, I have heard both ways to do a smaller zigzag stitch because it catches more. I don't feel that that's necessarily true. I like the bigger zigzag stitch because A, it's going to give you a wider stitch. It's going to, in my opinion, hold it better and um, you can see more of it. And I like the look of being able to see the stitch. So this is a very repetitive type of project because you're doing the same thing over and over. You're just wrapping the fabric around the rope and then stitching. Wrapping fabric and stitching. Make sure you go in and you snip all your little threads from 
starting and stopping that way they don't get caught up and when I get pretty close to done with the base of this I will come back and restitch the middle of this here because that's not zigzag stitched so I will come back and do that I find it easier to come back and do that little part of the spiral later on than to do it right off the bat As you can see, our spiral is coming along quite nicely. They grow rather quickly, so that makes it a nice, quick and easy, fun project to make. You could sit down and make one. It took me just a couple of hours to make my bigger bowl that I made yesterday. Okay, so as you can see, we're coming to the end of our fabric again. So at this point, I'm going to put you guys on pause. I'm going to continue sewing my spiral until I get it to the desired dimension that I want it. Um, and then I'll be back. All right, so as you guys can see, I'm almost to the end of this fabric here. And what I want to do now that my base is kind of big enough is I want to cut my thread slide this out and then I'm going to go in here where you can see my zigzag stitches started right here so I'm gonna start right about where those zigzags are at overlapping them a little bit that way they're nice and locked in and I'm just going to zigzag stitch around my inside swirl. Remember I said we were going to come back to that? So all I'm doing, oh, and my thread broke again. Of course it did. Okay, so I've rethreaded my machine and we're back in business. So I'm just going to follow this inside coil zigzag stitching them together and the thread snapped again I don't know why it's doing this one moment okay I think we're back in business now so I'm just going to continue stitching around this inside coil, hoping that my thread does not break again. You know, when you're on camera, everything that can go wrong will go wrong, so... gonna snip this off here and we're just about to the center and the thread snapped again all right so I went ahead and finished zigzag stitching that because of course the thread kept breaking so now what we're going to do now that that is completely zigzag stitched and hopefully you can see that see how I just kind of went around um, now I'm going to reattach back over here on this side. We're going to get a few stitches in. Okay, that's in there nice and neat now for me to go ahead and continue wrapping some more fabric. Okay, so I've wrapped some more fabric around my rope here, and I've measured this, and this is at approximately four and a 
three quarters to five inches wide and I think that's a pretty good width on the base for what I want to use this basket for. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start building our wall. Now I want to wait until I get to my next transition of fabric to start building my wall for um, the reason of being is because I want to be able to know exactly where I started building the walls of my bowl. So I'm just going to continue doing my zigzag stitch until I get to the next transition of fabric. Now also I told you it's very important that you have your rope feeding in on this side and that there was a reason for that. Well, the reason for that is now. My apologies for the teenager in the background. So we're just going to continue our zigzag stitch until we get to that transition. And we're just about there. Okay, so now we're at the transition where I'm starting this new piece of fabric. Now I said that the rope is very important to have it on this side as you're working because now what we're going to do is angle our bowl up. Now you could slightly angle your bowl, you could at whatever angle you want to. Now I want my bowl to kind of come up quite quickly and build the walls, so I'm going to push mine all the way up. And you do the same thing. You just hold your bowl up like this and continue your zigzag stitch. Once you get this going, it's a lot easier. Your bowl just kind of rotates on its own at this point. You just got to make sure you're keeping your finger here and pushing your next layer of your rope up against your bowl. That way there's no gaps and it's nice and tight. Don't sew through your finger though. That would hurt. And just keep zigzag stitching. Wrapping your fabric around your rope as you need to. And remember to hold your bowl upright like this and that's what's going to build the walls of your bowl. Now I'm building this bowl, or making this bowl should I say, to just set on my desk and collect sc small scraps of paper and stuff that I can then dump into the garbage can. So I don't need a great big bowl because I don't want it taking up a lot of space on my desk. Okay, so here we are again. We're back here to wrap more fabric. Let me grab another piece. Let's do this solid pink piece. I might have to rip me some more fabric strips. So showing this again, just so you guys can see how it's done. Just continue wrapping at an angle. As it comes around, pull it so it's nice and tight around your rope. I'm not even in frame showing that, so here we go. Wrapping at an angle and pulling so it's nice and tight. As I do this and it gets closer to me, it's kind of harder to wrap it. So I just kind of back my chair up some and I hold the rope out and I just continue wrapping. As I'm going along, if I get these little strings and stuff, I just kind of rip them off and throw them over in my bin.
when you're at this point, you can either clip it or add another piece of fabric. I'm going to go ahead and add another piece of fabric and wrap it around and we'll be back when I'm ready to start sewing again. So I have wrapped some more fabric and now I'm ready to continue sewing again. Again, remembering to hold my bowl upright, push against my new piece of rope that's coming along to make sure everything stays nice and tightly together. Now, as you can see right here, well, maybe you can see, let me take the camera down for just a second. So I have picked my camera up now, so if I'm wobbly, I'm sorry. But as you can see here now, it is starting to go up and form the wall. Now it, remember, we started pushing up when we got onto this color fabric right here. So keep in mind where you started building the walls of your bowl because that's going to be important when you go to finish off your bowl to get a nice even top on the top of it. So we're just going to keep continuing the same process of zigzag stitching this rope and adding our fabric pieces around the rope. So when I get to the point to where I'm ready to finish off the bowl, I'll be back. Okay, so I have, as you can see, come to the end of my bowl now. So I'm going to position this to where you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to take my scissors here and I'm going to cut a very long diagonal here. Okay, that's not quite as long as I want it. So, there we go, that's a little bit better. So now I'm going to take my fabric and I'm just going to continue wrapping as if I would for anything else because I want to cover the end of this. And I cut it off at an angle, that way I can cover the end of it with my fabric. And as you see, it gets smaller as we go down. So I'm going to now trim my fabric. I'm going to clip it just like I would anywhere else and now we're going to continue so I have measured this somewhat to end kind of where we started now remember we said we wanted to remember where we started our bowl on building our side up so that's what I've done so now I'm just going to continue my zigzag stitch
Now, as you can see, we're coming towards the end here. Now, the end is still difficult for me because I've only made, this will be my second bowl like this, but you want to keep this tight here. And I'm going to hold it like so and continue stitching. Now this is why we cut it at an angle there. That way as we come this way, it kind of blends into the bowl. Now y'all may think, okay, we've reached the end of that, we're done. No, we're not. We want to continue zigzag stitching, letting this part of the stitch go off of the fabric. That way we're stitching just the very top edge of this. So I'll go ahead and continue to do this and I'll be right back when we get towards the end. Okay, so as you can see, I am coming back around to the end here where we created that taper and I'm just going to continue doing my zigzag stitch on the outside edge to give it that finished and completed look. And then I'm going to follow my taper down. And then I'm going to continue stitching a little ways on the top rim. We're going to back stitch and lock that into place. Cut our thread. I'll push the sewing machine out of the way. And we'll come in here and we'll look at our bowl. And anywhere we see any strings hanging off, that I'm going to leave because that's part of the material and I like that. Okay, let's check the inside. Okay, so as you can see, my edge isn't perfect, but it's a handmade bowl, so it's not going to be perfect. But I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it is pretty even. This side is, you know, you just kind of got to push it down. And there you've got yourself a cool little rope fabric covered bowl. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It's um, a little different of one for me. And anyway, guys, until the next time, Stay healthy and keep it crafty, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.